Prime Minister, happy International Women's Day. Um, you've announced the consultation on a new bill to counter domestic violence, but you announced this over a year ago. Why didn't you get going on it sooner when you've said it's a personal priority for you? Well, it is a personal priority, this issue of um, domestic abuse, because it's about more than just physical violence. It can be emotional abuse, it can be economic abuse is something that I've been dealing with since when I was in opposition and as Home Secretary I moved uh, what the government was doing forward in a number of areas on this. But we want to get this right and this is a real opportunity for us now to put onto the statute book in law a definition of domestic abuse to raise people's awareness that this is not just about domestic violence, the physical violence is an important aspect often but so much else, people can suffer from so much else in the home. But you could have done it so much earlier. You announced a plan for consultation over 12 months ago, and we know the number of women's lives lost in the course of a year it can be around 83 women's lives lost in a year. You could have got going so much faster. It's about getting it right, Julie. First of all, looking at what is right to put in the, in the bill, potentially, and then actually asking a wide group of people so yes, the experts, the professionals, the people providing support to victims of, and survivors of domestic abuse. But most importantly, we want those people who have experienced domestic abuse, people who have suffered from it, to come forward with their views about what works. I met a fantastic group of women this morning um, who are, have been survivors of, of domestic abuse, who are using their experience to help others. And what I said to them is, you know, we can have all the ideas we like in government. What we need is people who've been through this to come forward to help us to make sure that we get it right. Because what we don't want to do is put a bill on the statute book and then find that it doesn't work. But campaigners have broadly welcomed the ideas and the things that you've put forward today, but they're saying it all risks being undermined because of the way you plan to change uh, the way refuges are funded. And they've put out an absolute warning call on this. They're saying that the funding change that you're planning will be catastrophic. It could force more than a third of specialist shelters into closure. How does that sit with your priority? Well, we've heard a very real uh, message from the people working with the survivors of domestic violence of the need for sustainable funding for refugees. And we're committed to sustainable funding for refugees. What we're doing is actually working with organisations, with the charities involved, to make sure that we, that we do get this right. Again, it's about making sure that we get this uh, on the right footing. What we want to do is ensure there isn't a postcode lottery in future for women. Too many women uh, and victims of domestic abuse have felt that that lottery exists today. We want to make sure that doesn't exist. There is sustainable funding. Really? In fact, we see more beds for the survivors, the victims of domestic abuse today than there were um, in 2010. Will you abandon those plans if it becomes clear that refuges will close as a result of them? What we're doing is talking to the organisations involved who are actually well, providing these places. they're already saying that if you change well, this no. funding, then you could force more than a third of shelters into closure. They're but saying that loud and clear. You've had a petition delivered at Downing Street. Yes, and we're talking to them about what the right way of doing this is. You don't just say, because the current system, the current system doesn't deliver for all women. The current system has problems within it, so we need to change it. We've put forward some ideas, we're listening to the sector, we recognise and we're committed to sustainable funding for refugees. But would you say that you can guarantee under your watch no refuges will close? Oh, Julie, people, provision changes for a variety of reasons. What I'm saying is that what we want to do is ensure, we've already seen more beds available since 2010, we want to put refugees on a sustainable funding basis so that they can carry on providing the valuable support that they provide. And I've visited a number of refugees over the years in different parts of the country. The ability they give women to actually, who've made that difficult decision for many to actually leave an abusive situation, uh, the support they give is invaluable. But also we need to remember actually those women who don't make that move to leave who do stay in the home and what support they need. And there may be women watching this tonight who are sitting at home 
in an abusive relationship, recognising that. I want them to so feel able, they have the confidence to be able to come forward. So if forward. you're convinced that this current strategy that you are laying out, whereby women couldn't use their housing benefit to access specialist shelter, you'd be prepared to abandon the plan? No. We are talking to the sector, we're talking to the organisations that provide these facilities. The current system, the current system is not ideal. We need to change the current system. We're asking, we're talking to them about what the best way of doing that is to make sure that we can ensure that sustainable funding for refugees and that we end this postcode lottery. What's the worst example of misogyny that you've experienced, Prime Minister? Well, I've been very fortunate through my life and through my working career um, that I've not never had to suffer at the sort of misogyny uh, I've never suffered from domestic abuse, but there are so many women up and down the country who, on a daily basis, but are you've suffering. Not experienced, you must have experienced everyday sexism. You put a pretty firm put down to Jeremy Corbyn yesterday. Well, I think it's important that uh, we women do stand up and say to, you know, we are, let's, let's do this on the basis of equals, you know. We sometimes have a different approach to the way we do jobs and, and different experiences. But it's important for us in public life to recognise that the more uh, people we have with different experience making decisions, the better. And that's why it's important on this domestic abuse consultation that we hear from people who've experienced domestic abuse. Because the more voices we hear, okay. the more we can put that experience into the thinking behind the bill, the better it will be. Should misogyny be classed as a hate crime, do you think, briefly, Prime Minister? Well, that's... Uh, I, look. What I think we should do, what I think we need to do is to say what we need in this country is to make sure that there is a change in attitude. I think we've come a long way, but there is more to do. Uh, what we're doing on domestic abuse is part of that, but other things that we've done on helping women into the workplace, on, on helping women into the workplace, on helping women in business, on making sure there are more women on company boards, all of these issues are about saying, let's recognise the talents of women, let's recognise that we need to ensure that women have equal opportunities, let's have a different attitude. Can I just ask you very quickly something about your day job? And this is Russia, of course, it is a, an impending crisis potentially. If it becomes clear that the Russians were involved in what we've seen in Salisbury, in the poisoning of a former Russian spy and his daughter, would you consider expelling the ambassador? Well, first of all, the police are still investigating. Obviously, we need to let the police have the space and time to conduct their investigation so that we get the best possible evidence of what has happened in this, uh, in this particular case. Of course, if action needs to be taken, then the government will do that. We'll do that properly, at the right time, and on the basis of the best evidence. And the sanctions could include expelling an ambassador? We will, we will do the, what is appropriate. We will do what is right. Uh, if, it is, if it is proved to be the case that this is state-sponsored. But let's give the police the time and space to actually conduct their investigation. To go back to International Women's Day then, Prime Minister. Um, we've got women in key positions, not least yourself, of course, but it seems a real tension moment where women are increasingly experiencing abuse. Would you consider it a failure on your watch as Prime Minister if you didn't improve the lives of women in this country? Well, I want to improve the lives of women. I want to improve the lives of people across the country, women and men. Uh, but I think there is a moment now that we have with things like the Me Too campaign where there's been a lot of focus and attention on the harassment, the abuse that can take place within the workplace. We've even looked at that here, uh, you know, faced up to it here in the House of Commons in Parliament. But actually what we're doing on the domestic abuse agenda is raising an issue because while women feel better able to come forward to talk about abuse in the workplace. I still fear that all too often people aren't, don't feel able to stand up and talk about abuse that takes place in the home. I want to change that. I want people to have the confidence to come forward and know they'll get the support they need. And just one last question on International Women's Day, Prime Minister. I mean, there must be moments when you long to let your hair down and get away from it all. If you could have your perfect get together with your girlfriends on International Women's Day, away from all of the pressures of your job, 
what would be your perfect night with them and how would you let your hair down? Oh, goodness me. I mean, what a, what a question. And I hadn't thought about it because actually my International Women's Day is heavily focused on what we're doing on domestic abuse. But just so it's not, going to have the, it's not going to have the time to have the girls round and have an evening together, know, I'm afraid. I that That's a rather different you, situation. I'm just saying on your dream moment, how do you let your hair down with your girlfriends? Well, there's... I don't think that when you let your hair down, I don't think there's only one way of doing it. I think it depends on the group that you've got. It depends on the time. But as I say, there's my International Women's Day is rather more focused not on what we can do to enjoy ourselves, but actually on what we can do to help women out there, women who are suffering, women who are being abused and whose lives are being made a daily living hell. Prime Minister, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank, thank you. you.